விவரம் ஒன்று முதல் எட்டு முடியல் தொயக்குழுவே இயேசு ஆனவர் தாம் தெரிந்து கொண்ட அப்போஸ்தலருக்கு பரிசுத்த ஆவியினாலே கட்டளையிட்ட பின்பு அவர் எடுத்துக் கொள்ளப்பட்ட நாள் வரைக்கும் செய்யவும் உபதேசிக்கவும் தொடங்கின எல்லாவற்றையும் குறித்து முதலாம் பிரபந்தத்தை உண்டு பண்ணினேன் அவர் பாடுபட்ட பின்பு நாற்பது நாளளவும் அப்போஸ்தலருக்கு தரிசனமாகி தேவனுடைய ராஜ்யத்திற்குரியவைகளை அவர்களுடனே பேசி அநேகம் தெளிவான திருஷ்டாந்தங்களினாலே அவர்களுக்கு தம்மை உயிரோடு இருக்கிறவராக காண்பித்தார் அன்றியும் அவர் அவர்களுடனே கூடி வந்திருக்கும் போது அவர்களை நோக்கி யோவான் ஜனத்தினாலே ஞானஸ்தானம் கொடுத்தான் நீங்கள் சில நாளுக்குள்ளே பரிசுத்த ஆவியினாலே ஞானஸ்தானம் பெறுவீர்கள் ஆகையால் நீங்கள் எருசலேமே விட்டு போகாமல் என்னிடத்தில் கேள்விப்பட்ட பிதாவின் வாக்கு தத்தம் நிறைவேற காத்திருங்கள் என்று கட்டளையிட்டார் அப்பொழுது கூடி வந்திருந்தவர்கள் அவரை நோக்கி ஆண்டவரே இக்காலத்தில ராஜ்யத்தை இசைவேலுக்கு திரும்ப கொடுப்பீர் என்று கேட்டார்கள் அதற்கு அவர் பிதாவானவர் தம்முடைய ஆதீனத்திலே வைத்திருக்கிற காலங்களையும் வேலைகளையும் அறிகிறது உங்களுக்கு அடுத்ததல்ல பரிசுத்த ஆவி உங்களிடத்தில் வரும்போது நீங்கள் பலன் அடைந்து எருசலேமிலும் யூதயா முழுவதிலும் சமாயாவிலும் பூமியின் கடைசி பரியந்தமும் எனக்கு சாட்சிகளாய் இருப்பீர்கள் என்றார் few weeks we are meditating on the acts chapter 1 and 2 uh, so we are meditating the foundation of the christian life or the foundation of the blessed life so we are meditating for few weeks about the acts chapter 2 and acts chapter 1 so we so far we meditated about the repentance you know acts chapter 2 we uh, you know, we meditated the repentance when peter when he preached when he received the he and the 120 people when they received the holy spirit the people they gathered in that place they are wondering what is happening so in among the pe- uh, people mixed pe- uh, peter he preached about Jesus Christ you crucified God raised him so you you did against God nee kathirku virodhama ninga enna panninga ninga kaaryangale seidinga adanal so you want to repent to God repent he he preached the repentance the second peter uh, through the power of the holy spirit he said you should surrender your life to God God Jesus Christ to be your lord he is Christ and lord we meditated in acts 2 acts 2 and the third he said after your repentance after you accepted Christ the third thing we want to take baptism of baptism of the water baptism we meditated so in the in the last week we meditated two baptism two baptism one is the water baptism immersion in water another baptism is the baptism of the holy spirit two baptism we saw two baptizer two baptizer john the baptist and jesus christ is the baptized baptist so john came to baptize to baptize people in the water but the mission of jesus christ to baptize people in the holy spirit so we saw two baptism and two baptizer two baptizer so we saw the last week about the baptism of the holy spirit so today we will uh, we will meditate the baptism of the holy spirit how the what the scripture is talking about the baptism of the holy spirit so before we Uh, meditate the word let's close our eyes and we'll ga- ask god to fill us with his holy spirit holy spirit spirit of the living god we are inviting you deep down in our heart we we'll invite god holy god we are inviting you we are inviting you in our midst lord fill us lord can we cry out to god spirit of the living god fall fresh on me spirit of the living god fall fresh on me ullathinaalathil jeevanulla engalai nerakku 
understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, speak to us, Lord. Lord, we are longing to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill us, Lord. Lord, fill us. Holy God, Lord, take control of us, Lord. Take control of this prayer time. Lord, take control of this meditation. We summon this in your hand. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, we adore you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So for today meditation, uh, we, we read in Acts 1 and Psalm 33. Also we can read only the three verse in Psalm 33. And last week we saw, you know, the two baptism. The one, the baptism of the water, water baptism and the second one, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you know, if you read the scripture, when somebody, somebody accept Christ, when someone, they repent to God, when somebody realize, I am a sinner. So, who is the one making us to realize? The Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of God, when He moves in somebody's life, so that person, we realize, I am a sinner. Sinner. You know that when somebody realizes I am a sinner, immediately he will repent to God. He cry out to God, Lord, I am a sinner. I need a savior. Then some cry out to God, the blood of Jesus Christ will come upon some, the, the, the person who is calling upon him and the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse all the unrighteousness, all the sins. And make him to be a holy person. Holy person. So the blood wash all the sins. All the sins. So in that time, that person received the salvation. The salvation. When somebody come from the darkness to light. The light of Jesus Christ. He will receive the salvation. Or we can call in, in according to John chapter 3, Jesus said, you know what he said, you are the, you should born again, born again, we meditated, born again experience or new life from darkness to light. So we call it as a salvation. We saved from the wrath of God. We saved from the wrath of God. So if you read in, in Ephesians, uh, chapter 1 if you read you know in Ephesians chapter 1 you know Paul is writing to the the people in Ephesians he is writing and you know if you read chapter 15 can you read 15 and 16 therefore I also after I heard of your faith huh. in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints do not cease to give thank. Uh, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Uh, so here Paul said, you know, he is writing to the letter, the Ephesian church, and he is saying, uh, he is saying, I am praying for you. 
I am praying for you. Let's read uh, verse 12. That we who first trusted in Christ uh. should be to the praise of His glory. Mm. In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, mm. in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. You know, the Spirit of God made Paul to write to the church. And when he writes to the church, when you heard the gospel, when you heard the gospel, Bible said, when you accepted Christ, you accepted Christ, you put your life, you trusted, you put your trust upon Christ. So in that moment, you accepted Christ, you repented to Christ, and you put your life and you trust God, Bible said, you receive the salvation. When you receive the salvation, Bible said, the Spirit of God put you seal. Put you seal. When we receive Christ, when we receive salvation, when we born again, you know, Bible said, the Spirit of God put seal upon us. He is belonging to God. He is belonging to Christ. He is he was a saved person. She is a saved person. So the seal, the Spirit of God put seal upon us. We are belonging to Jesus Christ. When you keep reading the verse, if you read as we read in verse 15, Paul write continuously. Paul write continuously. You know, Paul said, you know the Spirit of God put seal upon you seal upon you, but he, he says, I am praying for you, praying for you. So what he is praying, read uh, 17. That the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the mm. Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. So now you received the salvation, you received the, the, the seal of the Holy Spirit, now, I am praying for you. Why I am praying? You want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here, you know, we know in, in 1 Corinthians 12, there is nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So here Paul said, you know, gift of revelation. So I am praying for you. You should receive the gift of revelation. So if God, God, the Spirit of God put seal, but you should not stand there. You want to walk in your, in your faith walk. You want to move forward. You move forward. How we can move forward? To pray. I am praying for you. So you also pray to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I am praying for you to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So when we receive salvation, we are belonging to God. But you and me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that is a new beginning. The new beginning. Be born again. Be born in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now we want to grow in maturity. We are longing to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So now, if you read in Acts 19, right? 19, the chapter 19. If you read, Paul, he, he went to, uh, can you read verse 1? And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. So here Paul, he is in, Ephes he is in Corinth. So he met some of the dis uh, disciples. And then Paul asked, yeah. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So Paul asked the disciples, you know, Bible said, you know, they are they are accepting, they are the believers. So Paul asked the question to the believers, do you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? When you believe, when you put your trust upon Christ Jesus, do you receive the Spirit of God. When you when you took the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they said, so they said to him, we have not uh, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So they said, we know Jesus Christ. We received salvation. 
we receive we we repented to god we received salvation but we never heard about the holy spirit the third person in in the holy trinity so then paul he said keep reading and he said to them into mm. what uh, what form were you baptized mm. so they said into john's baptism mm. then paul said john did he baptize with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who would uh, come after him that is on Christ Jesus when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul had uh, laid hands on them the holy spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied amen amen so they are believers they took baptism they took water baptism but they they never heard about the holy spirit but here Paul he preached them about the holy spirit and then he put his hand and they received the spirit of god they received the anointing of the holy spirit they are baptized the holy spirit so two incident we read i asked in in efficient we read paul is praying for the efficient church to receive the baptism of the holy spirit here paul in corinth he pray for the baptism of the uh, corinth disciple and he prayed and he laid his hand they received the baptism of the holy spirit bible say they speak in tongues and they prophesied and prophesied prophesy and the tongue go together go together so here you know if you read in luke 19 19:9 if you read the 19 uh, so luke chapter 11 or 11 9 to the rest of the verse jesus christ he said you know you should ask god you should ask your father you should ask your father to receive the gift of the holy spirit uh, read 13 um, you then be evil know how to give good gifts to your children uh. how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him so here jesus said you should ask your heavenly father you should receive the gift of the holy spirit when you ask him when you continually ask him until you receive the spirit of god god will give you the spirit the baptism of the holy spirit but you and me to ask so we read in in ephesians chapter 1 paul is praying for the children of god to receive the baptism of the holy spirit we read in acts 19 paul is praying and laid his hand upon the believers they received the gift of the holy spirit here jesus said you pray for the baptism of the holy spirit holy spirit you know salvation you should repent to god repentance but the baptism of the holy spirit you should humble yourself asking god to baptize you jesus christ is the baptizer nobody can't baptize anybody in the holy spirit jesus christ is the baptizer baptizer so here we should ask that to receive the baptism of the holy spirit holy spirit now today we will meditate how to receive the baptism of the holy spirit we read few scripture we read the scripture said you should ask god ask god to receive the baptism of the holy spirit let's go back in acts chapter 1 and 2 we will we will see what are the foundation what are the expectation of christ to receive the baptism of the holy spirit number 1 acts chapter 1 4 and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father mm. which he said you have heard me say for john truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the holy spirit not many days from now <laughs> jesus christ he said to his disciple so you you john baptized you shall uh, truly john, uh, john truly baptized with water 
John baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with Holy Spirit. You should be receive the Holy Spirit baptism. But he said, he commanded not to depart from Jerusalem. Jerusalem. You know, if you read the scripture, Jerusalem is the city for the king. King. God is sitting on his throne. He is ruling. He is going to rule from Jerusalem. So that is his city. His city. But Jesus, he said to, spoke to his disciple. You know, you received the baptism of the baptism, the water baptism from John. But you should not depart from Jerusalem. You should stay back in Jerusalem until to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or in other words, you should stay in the presence of God. In the presence of God. When we receive Christ in our life, you know, we read the scripture, kids, you move that way, not so when you we receive the gift of the when we receive salvation, the Spirit of God put seed. So in, it means the presence of the Holy Spirit is come come near. He near. So we should be in His presence and asking God to fulfill. That's why Jesus said, you know, you should not depart. So you should be in the presence of God. You should be in Jerusalem. In the city of God. Until you receive. Until to receive. You know, if you read Psalm 84, 1 and how 2. Long, uh, how lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My uh, heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Amen. Here, Devi, he is pouring his heart to God. Lord, this is my longing. What is this longing? My soul's longs. For the, uh, I want to be in your presence always. That is my longing. That is my longing. So when somebody received Christ, his, his, his soul to long, I want to be in the presence of God. Presence of God. So if somebody claim I am a, I'm a saved person, he cannot spend time with you know unnecessary things. Unnecessary thing. When I accepted Christ in my personal Savior, you know, I want to be in the presence of God. That is my longing. You know, before that, I have, you know, you know, my room was filled with friends always. Everybody will come and we talk and talk, useless word, and uh, you know, when I accepted Christ. You know, my desire, I want to be in the presence of God. I want to read the whole scripture. My, my, my thought process was completely changed. I want to be in the presence. I want to read. I want to pray. And my longing was changed completely. Nobody taught me. But the blood, the, 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 the mark, the mark, the seal, the seal of the Holy Spirit made me to change, to be in the presence of God. You know, when we, when we married, when we married, after married, you know, we dream for the marriage for several years. I don't know about you, I'm, you know, uh, you know, in, in India, back in India, we used to go, uh, you know, in India, before the wedding, the, the, what is the previous day? Um, we used to call Murtha. What what did you say? Huh? En engagement? No, not a. What do you say? Huh? Murtha. Uh, you know we we say in reception. Uh, reception after wedding. The previous day. Okay, the preparation day. Preparation. You know before tomorrow maybe going to uh, marriage somebody. So you know in those days we go and. Uh, you know, we sing songs with the bride, uh, bride or bridegroom, whatever they are in, in our street, in our, you know, in our church. We go and pray and sing songs. You know, yeah, kids will go. You know, that time we will pray. Everybody will say, when are you going to marry? Everybody, they will talk, all, all these things. So we will dream. So when we are going to marry? 
But after marry, you know, after when you see a couple, new couple, new couple, they will always be with with his spouse. Did you see that? Probably you might experience everybody. You know, we won't leave. All the relatives will, they will, they will, they, they used to say, you know, yeah, come man, they will, you know, they will say, why you are not leaving? They will, they, they will say all these things, right? So we will, we want to be with our spouse. That is the real love, real love. After some years pass by, <laughs> then it's a different case. So, so here, if somebody accepted Christ as our bride, our bridegroom, bridegroom, so the longing, I want to be with Christ. Do you have that longing? Do you have that longing? If not, you should come back to God. Come back to God. The longing, I want to read the word. I read the word, <coughs> reading and praying and be with the, with, with the fellowship, God's children. God's children. That should be your longing and my longing. Here David said, Lord, he, he was a king. He was several things to do in the kingdom. But he said, Lord, my longing it is in your holy presence. I want to be with you. Think about ourselves. How is our longing? Are we longing to be in the presence of God? To be longing in the presence of God? So if somebody longing the presence, that is the first initiative step. That is the expectation of God. Otherwise, what is the benefit God anoint you? Do you ask? We are asking God to anoint me. Give me the nine gifts. Why? Why? So be in the presence of God. So that is the gift. When you be in your spouse, you know the spouse will give gifts. Gifts. The same way, when you in the presence of God, longing his presence. That's why Jesus said, be in Jerusalem. Be in Jerusalem. Be in Jerusalem. Then Psalm 27, 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord mm. that I was that I will, that will I seek, mm. that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Amen. That is the longing. You know, that is the longing. So how is our longing? The first step, if you and me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the expectation of Jesus Christ is to long in the presence of God. You know, Holy Spirit is the one make us to join with Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is the one make us to be in part with the Holy Father. He is the make us to be fellowship with the Holy Father. The blood of Jesus Christ will come upon us Make us to be fellowship with Jesus Christ and fellowship with Father and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So longing in the presence of God. So today, you and me to long in the presence of God. Long. So if you and me long the presence of God, you always meditate. Meditate. And you spend your time Probably you might cook. When you, while you are cooking, you can meditate. You can speak to God. You can have a relationship with Christ. When you drive, you can, you can have a personal relationship with Christ. When you walk, you have a personal relationship with Christ. You can be in the presence of God. That should be your longing and my longing. Here Jesus said, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. Be in the presence of Jesus. Be in the presence of God. To spend time in God. 
You know, we are, we are fasting and praying for something. Or we are pray, fasting and praying for God to bless something. I encourage you today, one day, you, you take, you took, you, you spend time with God, simply, Lord, I, today I want to skip a meal, I want to in the, in your presence. Just, no agenda, no asking God anything. Asking God, Lord, I am longing to in your presence. Can we do that one day? In our home, in your home. Longing, longing in the presence of God. Waiting. You know, the, the we have in the God made human with a flesh and we have spirit and also we have the soul. So always the flesh longing to, always the flesh to long to do the pleasure of the world. The pleasure. You know, always the flesh want to eat good food. The flesh all, always want to, to talk with somebody to something. That is the flesh. When you skip a meal, you can weaken the flesh. Weaken the flesh. And you can give room to the spirit. The spirit always, the soul always long the maker. Long the maker. When you fast, when you skip a meal, so you are weakening your, your, your spirit, sorry, your flesh. And you are, you are giving room to the soul to long the maker. When you long the maker, as the Bible said, as a deer pants for the water. Water. So we should be in the presence. When you and me long, you know, we, you know, we are expecting, but we are not longing that much of expectation. Namakule, Parsutta Aviyanude, Varangala Peranana Vanjari, Yella Rikule Vanjari. Anna, Namayana Padro, Tanda Pori, Jekatari, whenever God, He wants, let Him give. That is our expectation. So the desire of God is, He always gives to give to you. That is the desire. But you and me to be in presence and longing, longing to be filled with the Spirit of God. Spirit of God. So the second expectation, Acts chapter 1, 4. And being assembled together with them, yeah. he waited, he commanded them not to depart from So them. here the disciples and being assembled together with them. Together. Together in unity. Together in unity. You know, how is our, our Christian life in our family? In our family life? Do we have unity within our spouse? Within the family, husband and wife? Do we have unity? Do we have unity in our prayer group? Do we have unity in church? In church? You know, that is the expectation. Do we have unity within ourselves? Unity. You know, when we pray for God to anoint, but our thought will go where, will be somewhere. What is the deal in calls? We will think in our, we will be here, we will pray, Lord anoint me, Lord anoint me, we will pray and cry, but our thought will somewhere, somewhere. So God is expecting, the first unity start in ourself. Ourself. We should have unity in oneness. Oneness. And together. Together. You know the 120 people in, in the upper row, they are in unity. Unity in those days. They waited for 10 days. You know, think about their situation. You know, Jesus was you know, 
now jesus they 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 crucified christ he was risen all the jewish people they are chasing the christians the 120 people the the jewish people they are chasing they want to kill the disciples and the followers of christ in those days in that situation the 120 people they are together they are together in unity they are longing to receive the baptism of the holy spirit they are in unity they never thought anything they never thought about jewish people they never thought about their life the one thing they are in unity they unite to care they are unite themselves and unite with god's children and unite with god lord we are uniting uniting you know the psalm 133 is amazing psalm amazing psalm that is the psalm you know when jewish people when they go for the to worship god in those days in jerusalem so they will come from several cities from jerusalem they will come from several cities to jerusalem they will gather together in jerusalem to celebrate the festival so in those days they will travel travel so bible say so then they will come to gather in unity unity they will come together in unity to worship god to worship god when we are in together when we are together so do you know what are the problem they will face it when we are together then you know when uh, you know two or five families when we are together so we will face problems right kids after kids they will play together after some time they will fight they will fight then we will think immediately after some time after some time uh, we will we will always think oh my son did the right thing he is wrong we will think we won't say we will think in our heart after some point they will they will separate you know last week i was in uh, not last week few weeks weeks back i was in houston i i i was in you know one of the prayer group in after that they they spoke to me you know there we are talking and so they somebody said you know five families they together they uh, they went they got a goat okay they got a goat so after they got a goat the problem arise so who will take the leg <laughs> who will take the leg so you know somebody to take so five families they went together to it's a good intention after they they portion that's it <laughs> they said nobody talked to each other <laughs> So this is, you know, our life, the Christian life, our unity, our unity. We are not able to adjust our brothers and sisters. We are not able to love them. Love them. How is our life? You know, I used to, you know, India used to go to the camp. You know, all the, all the camps we heard about problem. I, I lost this one, I lost this one. All the problems arise. So the expectation of Christ, God is you and me to be unity. Unity. We should adjust our life. Adjust our life. We should love. We should love. The expression will come out. You know, our love if you love me, I love you. That is the human law. <coughs> but God's law, if you hate me, I love you. I love you. If you beat me, I love you. 
I love you. So that is why, you know, lot of the problems in the church today. Why Christian families are breaking? Because we are, we don't have love. We don't have love. So here, you know, Bible said, the, all the Jewish people, they gather together to worship God. So, they, uh, can you read one verse? Psalm 30, 133, 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Ah, how good. You know, the Spirit of God is saying, how good. A uh, yeah. How good and how pleasant good. it is for brethren to dwell together. To gather in unity. In unity. So how, you know, today, you know, every prayer group in America, in Indian prayer group, and Indian church, is division. Is division. Pastors are crying. American churches are division. Christian families are divided. Divided. We don't have unity. But we are speaking tongues. Do you think that is the from God? No. If you don't have unity, that, that, that the word which we speak is not from God. Today, you know, a lot of people, they are speaking in tongues. Because the word they memorized and they are speaking. If you carefully, if you leave, if you see the people live, if they don't have holiness, if they don't have unity, they speak the same word. No power. I see several people. Several people. They speak in tongues. They think the spirit of God is using them. No. No. One time, one of the, you know, prophet, he told me, you know, we are, when we are talking about the ministry, and he said, you know, he said to somebody, and he said, he is not talking with the Spirit of God. He is, he is speaking the, the tongue through the evil spirit. He is not praising God. He, is, uh, uh, he, he used the word Devanode Namate Dushikra. So if you don't have unity, you don't have unity. The Spirit of God will always unite together. Unite together. You know, I might have difference of opinion. I like this, I, I like, I like this food. You might like different food. My wife likes different food. We are, we are unique. Unique. But we should together. We love each other. We should forgive each other. We love each other. Then only the unity come. Unity come. Without unity, the Spirit of God won't be there. Won't be there. If you have anger with somebody, the Spirit which you speak is not from the Holy Spirit. So the expectation of God is the Spirit of God. Why I said, when you are in unity, Please read verse 2. It's like the precious oil upon the head, mm. running on the beard, the beard of Aaron running mm. down on the edge of his garments. Yeah. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. From there, For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Amen. That is the anointing. The anointing. When we are together in Christ, in Christ, Bible said, <laughs> the anointing will come upon. Anointing. The anointing God anointed for Aaron. Aaron, the high priest. So God called you and me as the priest today. So when we are together in unity among God's children, among our brethren, among our sisters, in unity, with love, with love, with love and kindness. The anointing will come up. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you and me unite together. That is a unity. Unity. But 
today the sad thing satan bring division in the church you know on one hand satan is persecuting the believers and the other hand he is bringing division within the churches division based on color division based on caste in india division based on status economic status <coughs> divisions uh, division uh, brings state on languages as a god children when we have all watched by the blood of jesus christ we should never allow the division everybody those who accept christ he is our my brother he is my sister that should be the unity that is the expectation of god the spirit of god is the one make us to unite unite that is the expectation that is the expectation you know jesus christ if you read john 17 before he go to the the cross of calvary jesus christ is praying after the supper, after the you know the passover and he with his disciple he prayed if you read john chapter 17:1 please 17:1 he just spoke these words lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come glorify your son that your son also may glorify so you. jesus he he said to his father lord the time is come time is come it is a beautiful prayer in john chapter 17 He is praying for several things. He is praying for his disciple. He is praying for God. He God to reveal through him, and also he is praying for me. He is praying for you, and also Jesus. He prayed for the unity. And if you read in eleven, please. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy yeah. Father. Keep your name in those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are amen god is one the trinity is one the son of god the son uh, the uh, god the father god the son god the holy spirit they are one jesus said father we are one we are one but they are also being one being one but if we are not unity we are not unite together we are saying that god is not united if god is one we are also one one that is the prayer jesus christ he offered offered you know after this prayer jesus he prayed in the garden of gethsemane he prayed bible said when he prays the sweat came as a blood blood when jesus he saw the the church today in the garden of gethsemane the church washed by the blood of jesus christ he saw the church today in the garden of gethsemane he saw division within the church he saw when he is praying in the garden of gethsemane and he cried father these people i shed my blood they are my my children but they are not unite together he is praying father give them let them be unite together he saw the division in the church and he prayed Lord, they want to be in one. They want to be in one. So how is our life? When we are together, together within the Christian, you know, think about the Indians today in in Atlanta, in Atlanta. How many, um, uh, how many probably few lakhs within the lakhs. probably christians probably thousands within the thousands how many divisions how many divisions 
So today, God is expecting you and me to pray for unity within church, within the so-called believers. We should pray. We should pray. Bible said, Jesus he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. So the John 17, he prayed in the Kenesaret, in the, that valley he prayed. But some of the theologians said probably Jesus Christ might took the uh, prayer in the garden of Gethsemane. So he prayed. He prayed for you. So if you and me to receive the Spirit of God, we and me to be filled with the love. No hatred. No hatred. You should never hate anybody. You should not hold anger to anybody. Anybody. If somebody did wrong, we can go and tell them. That is our duty. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. That means it's not holding our anger. But we should love them. We should love them. So Christ expecting unity within the family. As husband and wife, when we are together to pray for children's blessing, God will hear. The anointing will come. The anointing will come. As I, today I encourage you, you know, as a family, you pray together for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When you pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, then, then God will anoint you. God will anoint you. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the third expectation, you and me together in unity. In unity. The third one, Acts 1, 4. In being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Amen. So, you should wait to the promise of the Father, which he has said, you have heard from me. That is the promise. You and me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is the promise from God. Are we receive the promise? So if you know when, when we receive a promise for the earthly things, we are longing and praying God to fulfill the promise. But here, God promised you and me. God promised the children of God. God promised the, the people, those who washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. What is the promise? You will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is the promise for all the Christians. All the Christians. But are we praying to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? That is the promise. We are praying for the earthly things. Earthly things. We are crying God. Lord you promise. You promise. I will promote you this year. Why you are not promoting. We are, pray, we are praying. We are claiming God's promise for our promotion. We are praying God. Uh, God's promise for our visas. But God is reminding you and me. You and me to claim the promise of God. You and me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is the promise of God. That is the promise of God. So you and me to pray until you should long first. You should long. Do you have the longing? Do you have the real longing? If you have real longing, put your hand upon your chest. Lord, I am longing for your the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We should have real longing. Real longing. Without we are longing, God won't anoint you. We should long. We should long. The gift of the Holy Spirit. You know the days, you know the, the, the days are coming. Without the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
we cannot bring anybody to Christ. Now the heart of the people are hardened. Hardened. We can, you know, we can share the good news of Jesus Christ to people. We are sharing with love and compassion. But if you and me receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, then people will accept Christ immediately. Immediately. If you have a real longing, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will make you too. The operate, the gift will operate you. Operate. You know, without your knowledge, the Spirit will operate. Operate. When you really longing, really longing. The nine, you know, generally when we receive the gift of tongue, we used to stop. Oh, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No. In God, we have nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. You and me to learn. Learn. They are eagerly waiting. They are eagerly waiting. I don't know. In 10 days, imagine. You know, now, if, if we conduct a camp for one day or two days, immediately what we will think? What food we can get? In which uh, shop we can arrive? We can order biryani. At what time we will get coffee? When uh, to, we can ask whom to bring donut. We will ask all these things. All these things. But here the 120 people, they never think anything. Just they waiting. The promise of the Holy Father to be fulfilled. To be fulfilled. Are we really longing the Spirit of God? Really longing. If you and me really longing, God will give you the nine gifts. God will live. God will give you the nine gifts. You don't need to be a preacher. You don't need to be a theologian. God never look for a theologian. God look for a man who's longing in his presence. To longing him and longing the Holy Spirit. Longing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. A longing person. A longing person. So here the 120 people, they are longing. They are longing. They are longing. They are waiting. You know, they might have kids. They might have kids. I don't know how they managed. They are longing. You know, Psalm 30, 63, 1, please. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry, thirsty land where Amen. there is no water. So here, Psalm said, yearly. I will wake you yearly. If you really long to be in the presence of God in the early morning, without your knowledge, you will wake up. You will wake up. You know, for example, tomorrow, tomorrow you want to go to Florida for camp. A camp, you know, as a family, you are going for a uh, vacation. Vacation. So you want to get ready 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. So at what time you will wake up? 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock you will wake up. Because we want to be I want to see the beach. I want to see the breeze. I want to be in the air. That is our longing. How is our longing to the presence of God? If you have the longing, without your knowledge, you will wake up. You will wake up. Then, then we will say, I am asking God for several years. God is not anointed. Never anointed. You never receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will say, you blubber something and you will go. Never you will receive the anointing. You should really long, long the presence of God. If you really long, God will make you to wake up. Make you way to wake up. You pray and really in the presence of God. Long. Long. 
And John 7, 37. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, Anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Amen. Jesus, if you really thirst, if you really thirst, you will look for water. You will look for water. If you are really hungry, you will look for food. <coughs> if you really, I want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you will look for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You never follow theology. You never think about any theology. People will speak about theology. They won't never receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Never receive. That's why people will argue and argue. Never receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's why churches are closing today. They never. You know in Acts. In Ephesians chapter 1. Which we read. Most of the theology and they believe. When you accept Christ. Bible said. You receive the. The, the mark of the. The seal of the Holy Spirit. That is the anointing. But mainline churches they believe. That is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. No. <coughs> Scripture is very clear. Bible is very clear. You can argue. You can quote several verse. But that is not the anointing. <laughs> anointing. You should need the holy. You should be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That is no doubt about that. You should be washed. But you should be in the presence of God. And longing. You should humble yourself. Waiting. The presence of God. Then, when you humble yourself, God will give the gifts. The nine gifts. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, few, few, few months back, I received a call from one sister from New Jersey. She told me, she called me, Anna, I want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But I feel I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then I asked, what are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm longing. I, I, I wish you should receive the Holy Spirit. She said, I, did, I didn't speak tongue. But whenever I pray, I cry. I feel the tears in my, in my, in my eyes. I said, Yes, you are. You are almost near. But you receive. You ask long. You long. You cry out to God. Lord, you anoint me. I need the anointing with the sign of uh, in the in the uh, in the evidence with speaking in tongues. You long that anointing. So after she called few months ago she told Anna I received the gift of the Holy Spirit with the tongues hallelujah hallelujah if somebody really longing waiting in the presence of God God is ready to give anybody it is free gift it is a gift from God it is a gift you do not need to pay anything Anything. That is not God's expectation. But He wants you and me to wait in His presence. Asking Him. Humble yourself. Longing His presence. Longing His presence. You should wait. You should wait. That's why Jesus said, You should thirst. You should thirst. Thirst. The fourth one. Acts 1.14 and all are continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. In one accord, in prayer and supplication. One accord, in prayer. You know, in the upper room, the 120 people, they are together. They, they are in, in Jerusalem. As Jesus asked them to stay in His presence. They are in, in, in Jerusalem. They are united together. They are united together. They are eagerly waiting the promise of God to be fulfilled. But in one accord. In one accord. In one accord. So when you and me want to expect the Spirit of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you should have one accord. One accord. 
What is the God? The name of Jesus Christ to be lifted up. Hallelujah. That is the God. That should be your longing. Why God give the gift of the Holy Spirit? Not boasting yourself. Not, oh, I have this gift. I can be prophesied. I can heal. No. Why God give the gifts? To exalt the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the one expectation. To exalt the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus to be magnified. People to accept Christ. When, when you prophesy, when the gift of the prophecy work through you, people will repent. People will accept Christ. That's why God gave the gift. Make people to repent. Not to make my benefit. The benefit of others. The benefit of the church. The edification of church. The unity of church. Why God give the gifts to the church? To be in unity. To give blessings. To blessings. To give for people to come to God. To know Him. Know Him. If you have really burdened, you know, the Spirit of God will work you, work through you, work through you. Anybody can't, God can use. Anybody. Anybody. If you pray with wholeheartedly, with burden, if longing somebody to accept Christ, the Spirit of God will reveal the things to come for their life. You can be a prophecy. People will come and ask them. Several, several incidents you can say. Several incidents. Several incidents. You know, I remember one of several years ago when we are praying for a Hindu family. Hindu family. So we are praying with the, I think, JK family together for the family. Their parents are about death. About death. When we are praying together, the Spirit of God remind them, tell them, his father won't die. He is going to take this much death. Just I share with them, your father won't die. Jesus will bring him life. It is exactly happened. Exactly happened. Always. Somebody long, long for the presence of God. Long somebody to accept Christ. The gift will operate without your knowledge. Why? Because God loves them. Not I am a holy person. Not I am a gifted person. No. God loves that person to come to God. That's why the gifts operate. One accord, one accord to exalt the name of Jesus. To people come to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So here in one accord, they want to receive the, the promise to be fulfilled in their life. That is their one accord. Here. So one accord. When we ask God, you should Summit your life. Lord, if you give the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, I will magnify your name. Magnify your name. You know, sometimes people will, will say, Lord, if you give the nine gifts, I will, I will go and share about you. Now I will sit and sleep. Never you will receive the gift. Never. God never like a lazy person. Never like a lazy person. Today you want to work for God. With longing. With longing. And praying. And pleading for somebody to receive God. When you cry out to God. When you cry. When you cry. Without your knowledge. All the nine gifts will operate in you. All the nine gifts will operate. So today, the expectation of God is God, you and me to receive 
You know, I will finish with the one slide. So generally people used to say, I accepted Christ. And I pray, I pray and I pouring out to God. I am crying. I am, I am crying. That is the great thing. You are coming closer. You know, in India, when we go for uh, Arumi, in the falls, in the falls, when you go for, take bath, bath in the falls, so when you go near, the fall, the water will splash. Splash. When you go, you no need to be in the falls. When you come near to the falls, you will see the flash. When you, when you pouring out to God and crying for people, you are come. You are, you are came near to the falls. You are seeing the flash. You are seeing the presence of the Holy Spirit. You should go inside. Inside. You should not stay. You should not stay. Yes, when you pray for somebody, you are crying. Crying without your knowledge. That is the act of the Holy Spirit. You are seeing the flag. You, you, you know, the two on. The, the, what does they say? Sorrow. You will see the sorrow. The flash. The water is flashing. But you no need. You should go and take the baptism. You should go in. You are near. You are near. Near. Move forward. Move forward. Press on. Press on. God wants to baptize you. God wants to baptize you. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. All the, whole, all the scripture. Whenever people they receive the Holy Spirit. You will receive the tongues. You receive the tongues. You no need to be speak tongues in all the time. When you pray, you can pour your heart and pray. But you can speak in tongues. I see, you know, I never heard, you know, people will speak several languages. I see Merlin, she speaks several languages. But she never speaks in, in public. In her own private chamber, she speaks Several languages. Whenever I used to morning, I somehow I want to knock her door. I will receive the, I will hear the, the tongues. Then I won't touch her. So you no need to be speak tongues in the public. You can speak in public in the private. But you and me to receive the anointing with the evidence of speaking in tongues. All the scripture. All the scripture. You know, in the Old Testament, I put two incidents in Old Testament. In Numbers 11, 25. You know, here Moses is asking God, all the people of Israel to be anointed. So the Spirit of God, God said, I will put the Spirit within you. Put 70 people. 70 people. And the Spirit of God came upon the 70 people. Bible said they prophesied. They prophesied. It means they spoke something. They spoke something. The others, they didn't understand. They didn't understand. They spoke. In the Old Testament, you know, not in the tongue. In the tongue, in the different languages. People they spoke, people those who anoint, they received the anointing, they spoke tongues. You know, the same way in 1 Samuel 19, if you read 19 to 24, here Saul, and, sorry, Samuel and David was together. Saul want to kill David. So Saul sent his Soldiers to arrest David. So David was with the prophet Samuel. So the soldiers they came to arrest David. The spirit of God came upon the soldiers. Bible says they prophesied. Again Saul sent another group of soldiers. They came, they saw, they received the anointing. They prophesied. And the third, Saul, he came, himself came along with the soldiers. 
He also received the anointing. He prophesied. He prophesied. They spoke in tongues. Don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself. The anointing will come with the speaking in tongues. The speaking in tongues. That is a full measure. Full measure. But without anointing, you God will, you know, His grace and mercy, when you pray for somebody, God will give you the visions. That is His grace. But you want to move forward. Move forward. So you and me today to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Can we stand and be long? Long.